Hey everybody, I'm Chaz Christopher. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I post videos every Friday, so hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications. Okay, I got a question for you. Have you ever wondered why we celebrate Halloween or why we do things like dressing up, going trick-or-treating, apple bobbing, pumpkin carving? Well, if you have, you've come to the right place because today we're gonna talk about the history of Halloween. Welcome back. So let's talk about Halloween. You know what? I should probably get a little more festive here. Nothing about this says Halloween, right? Oh, <laughs> that's much better. <laughs> Our story begins back in the Bronze Age in 3000 BCE with the ancient Celtics who inhabited what is now Britain, Scotland, Ireland, and Northern France. Now each one of these areas had a different name for the holiday, but the most well-known one is Samhain. So that looks like Samhain, right? But it's actually pronounced Samhain. It was old English, what are you gonna do? Samhain means end of summer. The Celtics divided their calendar between the light and the dark half. The Celts believed that this time was the time that the veil between the world of death and the world of life was at its most Thin. So they had a lot of superstitions to try to keep away what they believed were bad spirits. They would light these big bonfires, make sacrifices. Historians say that they would take bones of cattle, throw them in the fires, and hence you get bonfire. Other historians say that they made live sacrifices of cats, horses, and cattle. They believe that the earth gave them so much through the year that to get a new bountiful harvest, they had to give back to the earth and therefore to the gods. People would take torches is home with them and light fires outside their houses. They would set food outside their houses for the good spirits, like their family members that they wanted to invite back in and let them know they weren't left out. They would also tell fortunes at these fires. And then therefore, when those people would go home, they would tell those fortunes to their people. It's also interesting to note that at this point in time with the fires, bats would come because insects were drawn to the fires and bats feast on insects. So the ancient Celts saw bats tied to this holiday because every time they had their big fires, there were bats. As the Roman Empire grew bigger and bigger, eventually they took on what is now the UK. As Rome would do this, they would still allow the pagan beliefs to continue, but they would introduce their own gods. And the first Roman holiday that got combined with Samhain was the goddess's Pomona celebration. Pomona was the goddess of harvest and fruit, and her representation symbol was actually the apple, and this is believed where the modern day bobbing for apples comes from. When Rome turned Christian, the popes would try to combine old pagan holidays and Roman holidays with their new Christian holidays. They first did this with the Roman holiday Lamunia, which was a holiday where the men of the family exercised spirits out of the house by throwing black beans over their shoulders. The church changed this day to what they called All Martyrs Day. It wasn't until closer to 800 CE that Pope Gregory III actually moved that holiday all the way up to November 1st and he called it All Hallows Day. Day, or All Hallows Mass. So the day before that became All Hallows Eve. And in Old English, that's Old Hallows Even, which whenever you abbreviate that becomes Halloween with an apostrophe E-N. Halloween is born. All Hallows means all holy, all saints. This was the day that the church decreed that all the saints that didn't have their own day, it would be on this day. And then they went a step further knowing that people wanted to honor their ancestors, so they added an All Souls Day to the end of that. The three holidays eventually become known as a hallow tide. Everybody in the Roman Empire doesn't all of a sudden go, yes, we're gonna celebrate All Hallows Eve and All Hallows Day just like you want us to. No, they kept with the traditions that they had. So so when didn't just die. People who were Christians at the time would wear black during the three days. They would go to the graves and in some areas of the Roman Empire they would put milk on the grave like in France or in Spain and Italy. They would put candles on the graves. It was also common for poor people at that time to go door to door 
asking for food in exchange for them praying for that household family who had passed away that year and they would actually give them soul cakes or sweet breads this was kind of the earliest signs of what we now think of as trick-or-treating there was also another practice called guising this is when people would go out and mask poor people would go door to door wearing masks and then they would perform tricks you have fortunes do some sort of entertainment act that they thought deserved to get food or treats or money it's noteworthy that in 1517 martin luther actually wrote his 95 theses it's ironic that he did this on october 31st because these 95 theses will impact the way that halloween is celebrated for centuries to come so once protestant starts really getting their own steam and building their own churches and england goes protestant all hallows eve all hallows day all souls day is out the window so what ends up filling that gap in england is guy fox day guy fox actually had planned with some other guys to try to blow up the monarch what they wanted to do was take the king that was currently there out and restore the catholic monarch they got all these barrels of gunpowder put them under parliament and on november 5th the authorities actually on a anonymous tip went to this place found him there guarding the gunpowder arrested him they eventually trialed him to death when he was going to the hollows to be hung he tripped and fell and broke his neck and so he didn't actually get the execution they want nor did his plan go off at the time england essentially took it and mocked him so every year on november 5th was called guy fox day or bonfire day kids would go through the street setting fires to areas in the street wearing mask of guy fox which is actually a very common mask you can see it here you probably all have seen it in pro Test. In the 1700s, there's a story that starts getting spread about this fellow named Jack who essentially makes some deals with the devil and each time he ends up tricking the devil and since he tricks the devil, the devil essentially says, okay, to get me out of this trap you have set, what do you want? And Jack says, I don't want to go to hell when I die. So Jack dies, he goes to heaven, and they say, no, you're not welcome here. He goes down to hell, and he says, tells the devil, hey, what's up? You know, I was supposed to go to heaven, and I, I'm not welcome there. And the devil says, well, I keep in my promise, you're not welcome here either. And Jack says, well, how am I supposed to get back? And the devil takes a coal from hell, gives it to him. Jack gets a turn up, puts it in the turn up, carves a little lantern into it so that he can see his way back to what we now would call purgatory. So in Europe, they use turnips because they didn't have pumpkins. But once the American colonies come on the scenes, that's when they start actually carving pumpkins. They realize they're much bigger, much softer, much easier to carve, and that becomes the modern day jack o' lantern. So, Halloween in America, pilgrims and the Puritans wanted nothing to do with this holiday. It was far too Catholic for them and far too pagan for them. At that point in time in the United States, not many Catholics were actually allowed to come. There was very few small pockets of Catholic people who were allowed into certain colonies, but obviously those small pockets would keep their All Hallows Eve tradition. Over time, American Revolution happens, more people start migrating to the United States, but then the Civil War happens, and the Civil War changes Halloween for the United States tremendously in the sense that ghost stories become very prominent. And the reason why so many Americans just disappeared, presumably died, and so people longing to see their family maybe because the bell's thin or not who knows they would claim to have seen soldiers returning home they would see the ghost of their soldiers and these stories would pop up all over the united states this is the first time in the americas that ghost stories starts getting told around campfires for some reason halloween has always kind of had this weird effect where women wanted to get their fortune told if they're going to get married or not and there's lots of superstitions they would do everything from throwing apple skins over their shoulder to leaving wet clothes out to dry over the night and their lover's face was supposed to appear in it. So as more European immigrants come, they start taking their traditions of All Hallows Eve with them here and it becomes a little more popular when the potato famine happens and lots of Scottish and Irish immigrants come. They're the ones who completely unleashed 
their traditions amongst the United States and Canada. The main thing they bring with them is mischief, in the sense that the children would go out on All Hallows Eve and cause mischief. So much so, it became such a huge problem in the United States and Canada that civil leaders, neighborhood leaders, community leaders, anybody who had a voice was encouraged to try to do whatever they could, take the kids from doing pranks like putting furniture on the roof, to putting soap in trolley cars, to opening gates to farms, to let all the cattle out or the sheep out. That each area kind of got really creative on their own. In 1911 in Ontario, Canada, we get the first incident of the words trick or treat. And again, this was probably a situation where they were trying to find something for the kids to do. Originally, it was have big parties. That's what was common for Halloween at this point. That's what the literature at the time put out to do. And so some people would think the party would tire the kids out. And some people would think, oh, we should have a big parade that would tire the kids out. Everybody tried different things. And then in 1917, World War I happens for Americans, which unfortunately, because it's pulled so many men out of the country, it left a lot of kids behind that they're mad at losing their father. These pranks got even worse. It, they just became so much so that through the 20s, it was quite a problem. And at this point in time, one company, Denison and Boogie, actually starts putting out books of things that you can do, games you can play, how you should decorate your house and get this. They also start selling Halloween decorations. All of this was the intention to try to get the kids from pranking. But really, it ended up being the kids that created trick-or-treating more so on their own because just like in the earlier days with the spirits of trying to appease them by leaving food out for them so that they didn't mess with your crops, people started doing that same thing in the United States. They started baking them popcorn balls, caramelized apples, whatever it took so that those kids would not egg their house, trash their house, etc. Unfortunately, after this, America is back in war and at this point in time, children actually had to go out and try to find scrap metal to help the country. Sugar was being rationalized. So Halloween, while it may have continued throughout different parts of the country, because in like 1921, Anoka, Minnesota actually started the first recognized Halloween parade and it still goes on to this day. So I don't want you to think that places just all over the country stopped celebrating the holiday but many did because they just couldn't afford it. They couldn't afford to anything to be destructed. Not to mention a lot of people were dying overseas so people didn't feel right to celebrate. Now, once those servicemen and women came back and started having lots of babies, making the baby boom, by the time the 1950s happened and the baby boomers were getting old enough to go out trick-or-treating, Halloween skyrocketed. Halloween became very mainstream. Hollywood picked it up. 1966, Charlie Brown introduces its version of Halloween to the public. And then in 1973, in the Greenwich Village of New York City, the first New York City night parade, which still goes on today and has over 2 million spectators started. And at that point in time, you could also say gay culture took it and embraced it because not only did it happen in the Greenwich Village, which is predominantly gay, it also happened in San Francisco and West Hollywood. In 1978, the Halloween movie came out, which also completely changed Halloween in the sense that before we were afraid of ghosts and witches and now all of a sudden we had to be afraid of each other and the fact that one of us could go a little crazy and become a monster and start killing each other. That was the first Halloween horror movie, the first human killer that really got tied to Halloween in Hollywood that is. Now also at this time there were reports of one kid dying because his candy was laced with heroin but that was actually found out that was his uncle's candy and it was never meant for that kid. Kid. There was a kid that died of cyanide poisoning, and again, this was done by a family member, not a stranger. The media grabbed a hold of this, started spewing it out, people got scared, and that's when X-rating candy and not so much trusting your neighbors started happening in the United States. I know when I was a kid, that was very big. I was not allowed to eat any candy until it was all searched through, even though the chances of anything happening to me were slim to none. And that's the beauty of Halloween. For so long, rather, it was solely 
back in the Roman times or guising during later times or today modern trick-or-treating, it made people go to strangers, ask them for something, and even though we still use the term trick-or-treat, it still allowed people to be connected, allowed you to go to a stranger's door and have enough trust to get something from them. And unfortunately, the media did mess that up for a little bit. Hopefully, we move past that. And we honor Halloween for what it always has been, finding a little bit of magic in the world, remembering our ancestors, and trusting our neighbors, trusting that whenever we need a hand, they will be there for us. I hope you have a rocking Halloween. It's been so great to share this with you. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up so I know to do more like these. I have a Christmas video, I have a New Year's video, and I have a History of Birthdays video. All of those you are definitely more than welcome to find right here on my channel. Most importantly, you do you, I'll do me, and I'll see you next Friday.